How's it going everybody? Daner here with North Central Coins and welcome back to another episode of the most rare and valuable coins in Australia. Today we're taking a trip to the land down under to uncover five Australian coins that can still be found in your pocket change and if identified correctly can be worth some big money. Most of the rare or legendary coins that you hear about are so rare that your chances of ever finding them are pretty much slim to nil, but I have done my due diligence to make sure that each and every coin we discuss on these lists could be sitting in your change jar right now. Even though these aren't your average pieces of currency, just about anyone can find these Australian coins if you know what to look for. In this video, we will explore the historical context surrounding the production of these holy grail coins and delve into why they hold such importance in Australian numismatic history. Additionally, we will discuss the distinguishing features, significance among collectors, and also the potential value if you were ever to find a legitimate example. Before I do get into this, I would really appreciate if you guys would smash that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and also ring that bell notification so you can stay up to date with my new content as it is being released. And then without further ado, what do you say we get right into it? and break down my top five picks for the most valuable Australian coins still in circulation. Let's get it, guys. Australia, Canada, and Britain all share a symbiotic relationship when it comes to their coins and currency, but February 14, 1966 marked a monumental turning point for Australia. On this fateful day, the nation bid farewell to its age-old currency system, which was rooted in the British pound, shilling, and pence, and embarked on a bold expedition towards the modern decimal currency system that it now proudly flaunts. This transformation was no mere alteration, it was a seismic shift that encompassed various pivotal elements. As the Australian pound, which had long held sway as the primary currency, gracefully bowed out of the spotlight and made way for the emergence of the Australian dollar. This new currency, bearing the familiar name of dollars, was ingeniously divided into 100 cents, echoing the global currency trends that were taking shape. With the adoption of the decimal system, it was inevitable that a new arsenal of coins would take center stage. This impressive ensemble included the 1 cent, 2 cent, 5 cent, 10 cent, 20 cent, and 50 cent coins, each of them a piece of numismatic innovation. However, it's worth noting that the sands of time continued to flow, the 1 and 2 cent coin gracefully bowed out of the scenes, finding themselves relegated to the annals of coin history. New banknotes were also issued and varying denominations to cater to the diverse needs to the Australian populace. The modest $1 and $2 notes were soon joined by their more illustrious counterparts, the $5, $10, and $20 notes, and in subsequent years, the coveted $50 and $100 notes also made their splendid entrance. During this pivotal juncture, both the old pound shilling pence system and the new decimal system coexisted, akin to the old friend bidding farewell to a new one making a grand entrance. This effort was aimed at empowering citizens with the knowledge required to navigate this brave new financial world. The aim was not only to ensure a seamless transition, but also to foster a sense of comfort and familiarity with the novel currency. To quell any concerns about financial upheaval, existing savings and bank accounts underwent a meticulous transformation, evolving from pounds to dollars. Remarkably, the value essentially remained the same, thus maintaining the economic equilibrium. Australian coin decimalization was more than just an alteration. It was a profound leap forward in Australia's financial and economic evolution. It bestowed upon the nation the gift of simplicity in everyday transactions, endowing customers and businesses alike with a newfound ease in calculations. Today, the Australian dollar stands tall as one of the globe's prominent currencies, wielding its influence with grace and authority in international trade and finance. The Australian 5 cent coin, which was introduced on February 14, 1966, replaced the pre decimal 6 pence and has been the lowest denomination coin since the withdrawal of the 1 cent and 2 cent coins in 1992. Due to inflation, its purchasing power has steadily declined and as of 2018 represents only 0.27% of the minimum hourly wage for workers aged 21 and over. Typical of most Australian coins, the reverse side features a design of an iconic Australian animal while the obverse side displays Queen Elizabeth II. A commemorative 2016 coin marked the 50th anniversary of decimal currency. 
Despite its high mintage, the Australian 5 cent coin doesn't actually circulate well due to its low value similar to the Euro 1 cent coin. The lowest production run was 8.25 million in the year 1972, while the highest was 306.5 million in the year 2006. No coins were actually issued for circulation in the years 1985 and 1986, they were only minted for special edition proof and specimen sets. There have been many debates about removing this coin from circulation due to its low value and high production costs. In May 2007, its bullion value was around 6.5 cents, though there were no reports of hoarding or melting despite the potential 30% profit. Market prices as of June 2018 were about $7 per kilogram for copper and about $15 per kilogram for nickel, making the metal content worth 2.5 cents or 50% of its face value. The production cost in making these coins is reported to be 12 cents. In Australia, these 5 cent coins are legal tender for amounts owed up to $5 in debt payments. So now that we have given you guys some basic information on the Australian 5 cent coin, what do you say we get into the coin that you guys are all here for? And that is the 2007 double head. Now the Australian 5 cent coin with the double head error was minted in the year 2007. It's super important to note that this error is specific to the 2007 dated 5 cent coins. Now what makes this coin so special is instead of the regular design with Queen Elizabeth II on the obverse and the Enchedna on the reverse, this coin actually has the Queen's portrait on both sides of the coin. This is an extremely rare occurrence and the result of a minting error. The exact number of these coins in circulation is not precisely known, but due to their rarity they are highly sought after by collectors. It's estimated that only a very limited number of these coins were actually produced, making them a highly valuable find. Collectors of air coins find this particular coin highly desirable due to its uniqueness. Air coins often command high prices in the numismatic market, especially when they involve a significant deviation from the standard design. Now, before we get into the value, let's go over some of the specifications. The 2007 air you are looking for will come in a rotated, incorrect alignment, usually resembling coin alignment, but there may be deviations in the orientation of the obverse and reverse. But the most important thing is that this piece has the obverse die design on both faces of the coin. Now some of the specifications, it was minted at the Canberra Mint, it is composed of 75% copper and 25% nickel, it has a weight of 2.83 grams, a diameter of 19.4 millimeters, the obverse was designed and engraved by Ian Rank Broadley, and the reverse was designed and engraved by Stuart Devlin, and the edge of the coin is milled. Now in the past, I have discussed a few of the Australian, British, American, and Canadian coins that you can find that can be worth some buku crazy amounts of money, but usually the sad fact and reality of coin collecting is it's the older pieces and the specimen pieces and the holy grails that are worth a lot of money. But this one is actually a modern coin. It is from the year 2007. So there is a decent chance if you are from Australia that you could find one of these if you are a coin roll hunter or coin collector. Now in terms of value, this is definitely one of the most valuable modern Australian coins that I have covered on my channel. It can be worth around $3,300 for an MS60 example. It can be worth $5,600 for an MS63 example, which as far as I can tell is the highest graded known example. But if you were to find one of these and it scored around an MS65, you could easily be talking a $10,000 coin. And another super important thing to note is that it's much more common for Australian British and American coins to score from MS67 to MS70. Canadian coins rarely surpass the MS67 mark. I'm not quite sure why. If any of you guys have any information or theories on that, I would love to know down in the comments. But for whatever that reason is, Australian coins seem to have a higher chance of getting those higher grade tiers, which can also add to the premium of this coin. So if you found one of these and it scored in an MS68, MS69, then you could be talking a $20,000, $30,000 error coin right here what do you guys think about the australian five cent double head air what would you ever do if you found a legitimate example or if you ever have found any of the coins discussed in this video let me know down in the comments i would love to know 
So before we do get into the value for the Australian 50 cent millennium NQ's flag variety, I just wanna go over some of the history of the Australian 50 cent coin. The third highest denomination coin of the Australian dollar and the largest in terms of size currently in circulation is the 12 sided 50 cent coin. It is actually identical to the Cook Islands $5 coin in terms of size and shape, and both pieces continue to be the only 12-sided coins in the Southern Hemisphere. The Australian 50-cent coin was first released in 1969 to take the place of the 1966-issued round 50-cent coin. The first 50-cent coins were round and made of 80% silver and 20% copper. However, as the value of a free-floating silver price increased, the bullion value of the coin increased to the point where it was worth more than the face value of the coin. As a result, that version was taken out of circulation and replaced with the dodecagonal cupro-nickel version of the coin. The Australian 50 cent coin is actually the third largest coin currently in circulation in the world. The only two coins that are larger are the Costa Rican 500 Cologne and the 50 franc coin. With the exception of the years 1967 and 1968, which neither have mint or proof sets nor circulation strikes issued, the year dated 50 cent coins for 1986, 1987, 89, 90, and 92 are exclusively available on only mint and proof sets. Australian 50 cent coins are only considered legal tender for a payment of a debt that does not exceed $5 but they are commonly accepted and used as legal money in everyday transactions. Like on all Australian coins, the current monarch is depicted on the obverse. So currently Elizabeth II is featured on Australian coins, but there should very likely soon be a switch to King Charles. Most common Australian 50 cent circulating coins will have the Australian coat of arms as the design on the reverse, but there have been commemorative issues throughout the years. One of the most notable and also valuable of the commemorative 50 cent Australian coins is a millennium piece from the year 2000. In the fascinating world of coin collecting, remarkable discoveries often unfold and enthusiasts find themselves on a treasure hunt like no other. A gentleman by the name of Drew Jackson, who was a dedicated coin collector with a keen eye for finding error and varieties, embarked on such a journey in the year 2006, and his find would become the stuff of numismatic legends. It was the year 2000, and the world was in the midst of celebrating the turn of the new millennium. It was a time of reflection, anticipation, and for coin collectors, a time of heightened interest in commemorative coins. Among these coins was the Australian 50 cent commemorative millennium coin, a symbol of hope and new beginnings. What makes Drew Jackson's discovery truly exceptional is the nature of the variation that he unearthed. The raised and incused flag variations on the coin's reverse side. Now these aren't just any variations, they're like hidden gems within the realm of coinage. The Royal Australian Mint, who is responsible for producing these remarkable pieces of currency, estimated that there are only approximately 200,000 of these unique variety coins that were struck with a single die intended for circulation. But what exactly sets these coins apart and makes them a collector's dream? Well, on the reverse side of the 2050 cent commemorative millennium coin, one can spot the Australian flag proudly displayed. But what makes this variety special is that the flag is depicted in two contrasting ways, one in which it is raised and another where it is incused. It's as if the coin itself is embodying the duality of history and reflecting Australia's rich heritage and its journey into the new millennium. One of the easiest ways to actually differentiate between them is to run your fingers over the surface of the coins. On one version, you will feel the flag's image raised above the coin's surface as if it's waving proudly in the breeze. Yet on the other version, that same flag is actually incused into the coin surface, creating a unique contrast between the two. When Drew Jackson initially made his discovery, it sent ripples through the coin collecting community. Collectors worldwide were captivated by the prospect of owning one of these. Each coin became not just a piece of currency, but a tangible connection to a momentous period in history. Drew Jackson's find served as a testament to the excitement and wonder that coin collectors experience in their pursuit, and his discovery elevated the status of the 2050 cent commemorative millennium coin, transforming it into a highly sought after treasure. So the next time you come across a coin, whether in your pocket change or within the vast world of numismatic treasures, 
Take a moment to appreciate the stories that it carries and the collectors like Drew Jackson who continue to unveil the hidden gems within the realm of coinage. Now, before we get into the potential value for this coin, I'm gonna give you some of the specifications. If any of these are off, it might indicate that it is a counterfeit. You have to be very wary of counterfeits these days. There are several sites that sell counterfeit coins, whether it be Canadian, American, Australian, and usually when it comes to airs or varieties like this, there will be an abundance of counterfeit coins. So you wanna do your due diligence and definitely check some of the specifications. So the denomination is 50 cents. The year of issue is from the year 2000. The composition of the coin is copper nickel, which is 75% copper, 25% nickel. The coin has a diameter of 31.51 millimeters, a weight of 15.55 grams, and the edge is smooth, as is the standard for most Australian coins. And the die axis is in metal alignment, as is the standard for most Australian, Canadian, and British coins as well. Now, in terms of value, the Coins in Australia website does not actually give you values on the low end. The lowest grade example that they actually give you values for is an MS60 but one important thing to note is that Australian, British, American, and sometimes coins from foreign countries will score much higher in the MS scale than Canadian coins. The Sheldon scale is a 70 point system, so it is very rare for Canadian coins to score above MS67. It's not that it never happens, but if it does happen, then it is usually a modern coin, and if it is an older coin, then it'll be worth some buku money. But Australian, British, and American coins have a much better chance of scoring between an MS67 and an MS70, and if it does score in that high tier of grading, it can definitely add some value to the coin. Now, in terms of value, the first price estimate that they give on coins in Australia is $762 for an MS62 example. Now on the low end, this coin definitely has a premium. I would say it's probably worth around $20 to $30 if it is beat up, worn, and been through the meat grinder. People will still want this thing for their collection, so it's definitely a good one to look for. But on the high end, it can be worth $2,160 for an MS64 example, which as we know right now is currently the highest graded known example. If you were to find one and it scored an MS65, it would probably be worth around $3,000. And as it goes up in the grading tiers, you're going to see some massive price jumps. We could be talking a $10,000 coin if it scored MS67 or higher. Now, what do you guys think about the Australian 50 cent millennium NQ's flag variety coin? What would you ever do if you found a legitimate example or if you ever have found any of the coins that I discussed in this video? Please let me know down in the comments. I would love to know. Australian one cent coins have been part of the nation's currency and economies when they were first produced by the Royal Australian Mint and its branches, as well as the Royal Mint in London. However, these coins didn't enter circulation until February of 1966. They were introduced as part of Australia's shift to decimal currency, replacing the earlier pre-decimal halfpenny. The decision to cease the issue of one cent coins was announced on August 21st, 1990. This decision was primarily driven by two key factors. The first factor being inflation, which had eroded the real purchasing power of these coins over the years. The nominal value of the Australian one cent coin had significantly diminished, making them impractical for everyday transactions. Secondly, the cost of minting these coins became increasingly disproportionate to their face value. So at the end of the day, it became economically unsustainable to continue producing Australian one cent coins. Despite ceasing their production, Australian one cent coins still retain their status as legal tender. This means they can still be used to purchase goods and services or deposited at financial institutions. Even though they were gradually withdrawn from circulation starting in February 1992, individuals and businesses are not obligated to refuse them as payment if offered. The feather tail glider, often known as the flying mouse or flying squirrel, is a remarkable marsupial species native to eastern Australia. Now what sets this tiny glider apart is its incredible ability to glide through the air, making it the world's smallest gliding mammal. One of the most distinctive features of the feather tail glider is its long feather shaped tail, from which it derives its name. This unique adaptation allows it to make controlled gliding descents from tree to tree, covering distances of up to 25 meters or 82 feet or more in a single bound. The Feathertail Glider's gliding prowess is an essential survival strategy for navigating its forested habitat and avoiding ground-based predators. In addition to its gliding abilities, the Feathertail Glider is also known for its minuscule size, with adults typically weighing around 10 grams or less. They are primarily nocturnal creatures emerging at night to forage for nectar, pollen, insects, and small fruits. 
These tiny marsupials are not only captivating, but an integral part of Australia's unique ecosystem. Their survival depends on the conservation of their forest habitats, which are increasingly threatened by deforestation and habitat loss. Now that you have an understanding of the animal on the reverse of the Australian one set coin, what do you say we discuss the coin that you guys are all here to find out about, and that is the Blunt Second Whisker 1966 Penny. Now this piece was minted at three different mints in Australia, and where it was minted can affect the value greatly. 1966 pennies minted in Melbourne and Perth are the most rare and will also have the blunt whisker varieties that you are looking for. Well, the penny minted in Canberra has the pointed whiskers and is not worth much above face value. Now there are two different degrees or varieties of the blunt whiskers which are specific to the location or mint that they originated. The most valuable of the Australian 1966 penny varieties and the one that you want to try and identify is the blunt second whisker which was minted in Perth and this one has the highest value but actually the blunt first whisker is actually pretty valuable as well that one was minted in Melbourne. Now the blunt first whisker variety on the 1966 Australian Melbourne penny refers to a specific characteristic on the design of the reverse of the coin. On this side, the first whisker and second whiskers depicted on the flying mouse appear to have a blunt or rounded tip instead of the more common pointed tips. This variation is very subtle but is a distinct and collectible variety among numismatists. The 1966 Australian Penny was minted at the Royal Australian Mints in Canberra, Melbourne and Perth, marking the first year of decimal coinage in Australia. Decimalization saw the transition from pounds, shillings and pence to the dollar coin and cents system. The penny was one of the denominations introduced during this transition. Collectors value this variety for its uniqueness and the challenge of finding it among regular 1966 pennies. The scarcity of the blunt first whisker variety contributes to its desirability and collectors often seek to add it to their collections. Now the value of these Australian 1966 pennies can vary depending on several factors such as its condition, rarity within the market, and most importantly, demand from collectors. Generally coins in excellent condition with clear details tend to commend higher prices. And with this one, where the coin was minted plays a significant role in its value. The most valuable of the three varieties is the one minted at the Perth Mint, which has the blunt second whisker variety. The second most valuable is the blunt first whisker, which was minted at Melbourne. And the least valuable of the 1966 penny varieties is the pointed whiskers, which was minted in Canberra. Some of the details and specifications for the 1966 Australian penny it is composed of 97% copper, 2.5% zinc and 0.5% tin. It has a weight of 2.59 grams, a diameter of 17.5 millimeters. It was designed and engraved by Raphael Mokloff for the obverse and Stuart Devlin for the reverse. The edge of the coin is plain and it is in metal alignment as is the standard for Canadian, Australian and British coins. Now it can be pretty darn tricky to differentiate between these pointed and blunt whisker varieties. I myself even had some difficulty differentiating between the two, so I will definitely put some examples up on the screen. First, we will start with the 1966 Blunt First Whisker, which was minted at the Melbourne Mint. In terms of value, these aren't super valuable on the low end. It all depends if you can find someone that's willing to pay a premium and wants it for their collection, but you can definitely get a couple dollars for these coins if you can find someone that really wants them for their collection. Now the Blunt First Whisker was minted at the Melbourne Mint. Now in terms of value, it can be worth around $20.90 for an MS62, $32 for an MS64, and all the way up to $37.80 for an MS65, and that is for the Blunt First Whisker, which was minted in Melbourne. Now for the rarest of the Blunt Whisker varieties, the 1966 Blunt Second Whisker, which was minted in Perth, it is actually worth around $17 for an MS62, so a little bit less on the low end. But as you start to go up, you see some price jumps. It's worth around $30 for an MS63, around $45 for an MS64, and around $50 for an MS65 example. And these prices are in Australian as well. So you will be able to get a little bit more in American or Canadian dollars. Now the least valuable of the three is the 1966 Pointed Whiskers, which was minted in Canberra, just to give you an idea. It's only worth about $5 in an MS62 and it can be worth up to $25 for an MS65 example. So the least rare, valuable and desirable of the three 1966 
whisker varieties. Another important thing to keep in mind when I'm giving you these price listings is that it is much more common for Australian and British and American coins to score from an MS67 to MS70. Unfortunately, coins in Canada do not score above MS67 very often. If they do, sometimes we'll get lucky and score an MS68, but usually only for newer modern numismatic pieces do you actually have a likelihood of hitting that 69 or 70 mark, but it is much more likely for Australian and British coins, especially especially if they are post decimal era. So these 1966 pennies, even though they are pushing the 50 year mark, they are still relatively modern in the world of coin collecting. So definitely a good one to have on your radar. What do you guys think about these Flying Mouse 1966 penny varieties? What would you ever do if you found a legitimate example or if you ever have found any of the coins discussed in this video? Let me know down in the comments. I would love to know. Australian coin decimalization refers to the process by which Australia transitioned from its previous currency system based on the British pound, shilling and pence to the modern decimal currency system that it uses today. This major change took place on February 14, 1966 and had several key elements. Some of these elements that were involved in the decimalization of Australian coinage were new currency units. The Australian pound, which had been the primary currency, was replaced by the Australian dollar. The dollar was divided into 100 cents, mirroring many other international currencies. Also, new coins. To accommodate this change, a new set of coins was introduced. These included the 1 cent, 2 cent, 5 cent, 10 cent, 20 cent, and 50 cent coins. But the 1 and 2 cent coins have since been phased out of circulation. Banknotes. New banknotes were issued in various denominations including 1, 2, 5, 10 and 20 Australian dollar notes. Subsequent years saw the introduction of higher denominations like 50 and 100 dollar banknotes. Transition period During the transition period, both the old pound shilling pence system and the new decimal system were used side by side. This allowed people to become familiar with the new currency gradually. Education campaign the government launched an extensive education campaign to help people understand the new currency system and ensure a smooth transition. And lastly, currency conversion. Existing savings and bank accounts were converted from pounds to dollars with the value essentially staying the same. Decimalization was a significant step in modernizing Australia's financial and economic systems. It simplified everyday transactions, making calculations easier for consumers and businesses. Today, the Australian dollar is one of the world's major currencies and is widely used in international trade and finance. In the 1980s, Australian gold-colored $1 and $2 coins were officially launched. The dollar coins were first launched in 1984 to replace the $1 bill. In 1988, the $2 coins were launched, likewise replacing the $2 banknote. The composition of these coins is 92% copper, 2% nickel, and 6% aluminum. The $2 coin is significantly thicker but has a smaller diameter than the $1 coin. The introduction of these Australian gold-colored $1 and $2 coins in the 1980s aimed to phase out the use of paper currency for these denominations. These newer modern coins, which were composed of a copper nickel aluminum alloy, not only provided a more durable alternative but also allowed for easier identification due to their distinctive size and thickness. Now before we get into this extremely rare and valuable Australian dollar, first we should discuss mule coins briefly. A mule coin is not some exotic currency from a distant land, but rather a coin with a quirky minting error that makes it incredibly special. Imagine holding a coin that appears like a certain denomination is on one side, but you flip it over and it's a completely different story on the other. It's like having a coin that is playing a double role. Mule coins are the result of a mix-up in the minting process where mismatched dies were used to strike the coin. The term mule refers to the fact that these coins are hybrids, combining elements from two different coin designs, similar to a mule or donkey. It's as if the minting process took an unexpected turn, creating an incredible numismatic oddity. One of the most famous examples of mule coins comes from Australia and it is actually the coin that we are discussing today and that is the $2,000 muled with a 10 cent obverse die. So if you ever do stumble upon a mule coin, consider yourself extremely lucky. These coins are not only rare, but also carry with them the charm of unexpected surprises in the world of coin collecting. 
These pieces are a reminder that even in the realm of precision and consistency, sometimes coins like to break the rules and become numismatic treasures. Australian coin collectors first learned about a significant coin blunder that occurred at the Royal Australian Mint in 2003. A few $1 coins from the year 2000 were struck with the wrong obverse die, head side, and sent into circulation, but the mistake wasn't discovered for a year or two. Some of the 2000 $1 coin obverses were accidentally struck using the Australian 10 cent obverse die. The 10 cent and $1 coins only differ in diameter by 1.4 millimeters, therefore the mistake went undetected and the fabled 2000 $1 mule was released into the wild. This incredibly rare and valuable coin quickly gained attention from collectors and numismatists the world over. Due to its unique combination of the 10 cent and $1 designs, the 2000 $1 mule became highly sought after, with some specimens selling for thousands if not more. The Royal Australian Mint eventually acknowledged this error and confirmed the existence of these rare coins, further increasing their desirability among collectors. When compared to a regular $1 coin, it's not difficult to identify a $2001 or 10 cent mule. Due to the smaller 10 cent die, the coin's obverse has a smaller double rim, which is visible in the coin's image above. Because the smaller die was utilized, the double rim and obverse striking are frequently out of alignment. Obverse strikes that are well centered on mules typically sell for more money. This alignment issue also adds to the uniqueness and rarity of the $2001 and 10 cent mule coin, making them even more sought after by collectors. Additionally, the distinct double rim on the obverse sign of the coin further distinguishes it from regular $1 coins, making it a highly desirable piece for any collection. Now there is some speculation on mintage figures for the 2000 $1 10 cent mule coin. On the now inactive Australian coins internet community, some of the more active mule hunters did disclose their fine numbers. The mintage figure was determined from these numbers and an enormous sample size that was searched. Some hunters examined upwards of 2 million coins and said that the 2000 $1 mule had a mintage of between 6,000 and 7,000 pieces. This limited mintage adds to the allure of the $2001 mule as collectors value coins with lower production numbers. Additionally, the rarity of this coin contributes to its high market value. Now the easiest way to identify this coin is to flip over to the obverse. The reverse of the coin should have the typical Australian dollar design featuring five kangaroos, but the obverse of the coin should have the date 2000, the portrait of Queen Elizabeth II, and most importantly, a somewhat noticeable seam or bevel in between the rim of the coin and the strike on the obverse. This is because the 10 cent obverse die was slightly smaller in diameter, thus creating a smaller impression on the coin around the size of an Australian 10 cent piece. Now before we get into the value, I quickly want to give you guys some of the specifications for this coin. If any of these are off, it might indicate that it is a counterfeit or a fake. This coin was issued for standard circulation. It is from the year 2000. It has a face value of one Australian dollar. Now one Australian dollar as of today is equal to 87 cents Canadian. It is of the decimal era, which means from 1966 until the present day. It is composed of aluminum bronze, which is 92% copper, 6% aluminum, and 2% nickel. It has a weight of 9 grams, a diameter of 25 millimeters, a thickness of 2.5 millimeters. The shape is round, and the coin's orientation is in metal alignment, as is the standard for most Australian and Canadian coins. In terms of value, finding price listings for this coin can be challenging, but PCGS actually lists a record of an eBay sale that sold a graded MS62 example for $3,598. Something important to note is that it is much more common for British, Australian, and American coins to score from MS67 to MS70 if they are in a high-grade mint state, unlike Canadian coins, which rarely surpass the MS67 mark. Because of these extra tiers in grades, if it does receive an MS68, MS69, or the MS70 grade, you can be sure it will bring some massive premiums. And with some of the information I've come across, a few that were graded higher than MS62 have sold in the past over the five figure mark. So if it hits around an MS65 or higher, you are talking a $10,000 coin easily. 
What do you guys think about this year 2000 Australian dollar 10 cent mule coin? What would you ever do if you found a legitimate example or if you have found any of the coins that were discussed in this video? Let me know down in the comments. I would love to know. So before we get into the 1922 2 over 1 Australian 3 pence coin, let's go over coin production in Australia briefly. Coin minting is a blend of science, artistry, and history. In Australia, this craft has a storied past dating back to the early 19th century. The Royal Mint has been at the forefront producing these iconic coins, and here's a brief glimpse into their minting process. It all begins with the design. Often the result of a nationwide competition, the chosen designs embody the essence of Australian culture, history, or a significant event. They then create the master dies. Talented engravers craft master dies. These are like the artist's brushes transferring the design onto the coins. The three pence's unique design showcases Australia's natural beauty and also its connection to the British monarchy. Then the blanks are prepared. Large sheets of metal are rolled into their precise thickness required for three pence coins. Circular blanks are then punched out and ready to receive their intricate design. They then proceed to strike the coins. This is the heart of the minting process. Blanks are loaded into presses where they meet the master dies with tremendous force. This imparts the design onto the coin's surface. The Royal Australian, London and Canadian mints are renowned for their quality control. Every coin is carefully inspected for defects. Imperfections can actually render a coin very rare and valuable, but only if they're genuine mint errors and they actually escape from the facility. Packaging and Distribution Once approved, the coins are packaged and prepared for distribution to banks, businesses, the public, and collectors. Now what role does the three pence coin play in Australia's numismatic history? The three pence coin first introduced in the year 1910 quickly became an integral part of Australia's economy. The kangaroo, a quintessential Australian symbol, graced the reverse side of the coin, the other displaying the current reigning monarch of the time, reflecting the nation's historical ties to the British Empire. History often takes unexpected turns, and so did the three pence coin. In the year 1966, Australia underwent decimalization. The three pence coin, a once valuable coin, transitioned into the equivalent of only 2.5 cents and its days in circulation were numbered. A remarkable chapter in the three pence's history is its role during World War II. With the nation in need of more coins than ever, production surged. Here's actually where international cooperation comes into play. The United States Mint, through its San Francisco and Denver branches, contributed to three pence production. Coins from the San Francisco Mint, minted from 1942 to 1944, bear a tiny S mint mark on the reverse, while those from the Denver Mint, produced between 1942 and 1943, feature a petite D mint mark. These mint marks are silent testaments to the global significance of these small silver coins during a tumultuous era. Coins serve as a convenient medium of exchange for small transactions in Australia. While digital payments and banknotes are widely used, coins are essential for everyday purchases like buying a cup of coffee, paying for parking, or using vending machines. Many businesses and individuals still prefer using cash for various reasons such as privacy, avoiding transaction fees, or simply out of habit. Coins are crucial for facilitating these cash transactions, ensuring that economic activities run smoothly. Prices for goods and services are often routed to the nearest 5 or 10 cents, reflecting the modern denominations of Australian coinage. This practice simplifies pricing and change making, making transactions more efficient. Collecting coins, including commemorative and limited edition releases, is a popular hobby in Australia. The Australian Mint issues special coins to mark significant events and themes contributing to both numismatic and economic aspects of their coinage. Australian coins, especially those with unique designs, are often sought after by tourists as souvenirs. This contributes to the local economy through the sale of coins and related merchandise. Coins are also frequently used for charitable donations. Donation boxes, which can often be found in retail stores and public places, provide an easy way for people to contribute spare change to various causes. The numismatic industry, including coin dealers, collectors, and auction houses, plays a role in the economy. Rare and valuable coins can be bought and sold, contributing to the economic activity in Australia. Coins also serve as part of the country's currency reserves. While their individual value is relatively small, the cumulative value of coins in circulation is significant. These reserves ensure that there are enough physical coins available to meet the demands of the economy. 
While digital payment methods have become increasingly popular over recent years, coins still have a significant presence in the modern Australian economy. They facilitate everyday transactions, support charitable activities, and contribute to the numismatic industry. They also play a vital role in preserving the nation's history and culture through the commemorative releases. So what do you say we get into the coin that you guys are all here to find out about? Without further ado, let's get into the 1922 3 pence 2 over 1 variety. Now this is not only one of the rarest coins in Australia but the entire world and its value definitely reflects its rarity. To identify this coin what you want to do is look at the date 1922 on the reverse and you want to look at the final digit 2. Now if it looks like this 2 is stamped over a 1 then there is a good possibility that you might have this coin. Now as far as I can tell, when they struck these coins at the Melbourne Mint, they actually recycled and used some of the dies from the previous year and the one was still visible underneath the two and that is what caused a few of this variety to get out. In terms of mintage figures, the 1922 3 pence coin has a mintage of 5,531,000 but currently there are only somewhere around 900 examples of the 2 over 1 variety which gives you an idea of how incredibly rare it is to find one of these errors. Now some of the details and specifications for this coin if any of these are off it might indicate that it is not a legitimate example there are counterfeits rampant on online auction sites right now like ebay wish aliexpress if you go on any of these sites you can find counterfeit holy grail coins like the 1943 1944 steel pennies and i've seen some other pretty crazy counterfeit coins on there so it would not surprise me at all if i was to see a coin like this especially considering the amount of money you can actually get for it now some of the specifications for this coin it was minted at the Melbourne Mint It is composed of sterling silver, which is 92.5% silver, 7.5% copper. It has a weight of 1.41 grams, a diameter of 16 millimeters. The coin's obverse was designed and engraved by Sir E.B. McKennell, and the reverse was designed and engraved by W.H.J. Blackmore. So when we start to get into the price estimates for this coin, it is actually a piece that is super valuable even on the very bottom of the Sheldon scale. You can expect to get a couple thousand dollars if you do identify a legitimate example of this coin. Now in terms of value, you can get around $3,800 for a VG8 example, which is at the absolute bottom of the Sheldon scale. That is a beat up example that is all worn, been put through the meat grinder. It does not have much detail on it, and that is absolutely insane. It is definitely a reflection of the coin's rarity. Now, as you go up on the bottom of the Sheldon scale, you start to see some decent price jumps. It can be worth around $6,500 for a VF20 and up to $38,000 for an AU50, which is right before you start to hit the MS mark. Now, as you start to get into the mint range, it can be worth around $65,900 for an MS60 and all the way up to $95,000 for an MS62 example, which currently is the highest graded known example that I could find, which is absolutely insane. If you were to find one of these coins and it scored any higher, especially between an MS67 and 70, then you could be talking easily a $250,000 to $500,000 coin. This is definitely one of the rarest pieces to come out of Australia with only 900 known examples and a good one to have on your radar for sure. What do you guys think about the 1922 2 over 1 3 pence coin? What would you do if you ever found a legitimate example or if you ever have found any of the coins discussed in this video? Let me know down in the comments. I would love to know. Also, I would really appreciate if you guys would smash that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and also ring that bell notification to stay up to date with my new content as it is being released. But I think that is pretty much going to do it for this one, folks. So thank you everybody so, so much for watching. But until the next one, Peace out and have a good one, y'all.